Today, we're exploring a couple of nodes that can speed up most of your comfy UI workflows, whether you're using Flux, Hunyuan Video Generation, or even SDXL or SD 1.5. All it takes is a couple of additional nodes and you can reduce your generation speeds by as much as 30% with almost no loss to your image or video quality. If we have a look here at this original image created on standard flux, this took about 23 seconds for me to generate on the 4090 I'm using on Runpod. Now with the addition of one of these nodes, I was able to bring down the generation to 12 seconds. Now, if we have a look at this other image, I was able to bring down the generation speed of this from 24 seconds down to 12 seconds. That is a 50% reduction in time using Flux. And there's really very minimal differences between the images. There's a little bit of slight change in the facial features, a little bit less contrast, but for the most part, it's the same image. Now, if you think a 50% reduction in time is amazing, with this other node, I was able to bring it down to eight seconds. That's almost a 60% reduction in time without a major drop in quality. Now, definitely with this other node, things do look a little bit more different. The colors are slightly different. Some of the facial features are different, but this is still a fantastic final image that you can use. So the way that I'm doing that is with these two nodes called T-Cache and WaveSpeed. Both of these are two different approaches to building out efficiency and reducing generation time with image and video generation. The first image that I showed you that had a 50% reduction of time on Flux was using T-Cache. And the one that had the massive reduction in speed down to eight seconds was using wave speed. Now, both of these use similar techniques to build out efficiencies in the generation process, and as a result, increase their generation time for videos and images. Effectively, what they do is they build out caches in the generation process where they're reusing information from previous steps to try and reduce the number of calculations that they need to do to create our images. WaveSpeed does it by comparing the difference between steps and looks for opportunities to duplicate steps rather than redoing calculations, whereas Tcash uses a more dynamic approach to build out those efficiencies. Now, if you thought the results were impressive with images, I also tested it out with Hunyuan. And using the FP8 model for a three second video, I was able to bring down the time from 84 seconds all the way down to 54 seconds. And for a longer video, I think it was seven seconds, from 269 seconds down to 107 seconds. Those are massive reductions in time. However, as we'll get into in a little bit, there is definitely some loss in quality as you can see in the examples here. So the way that these nodes work is you're able to set up a threshold here of how much similarities to look for in the process that the node can then duplicate to try and build out efficiency. So the higher the threshold, whether you're doing it here on the wave speed apply first block cache or here on the T cache node. By increasing this number here, you're effectively saying copy more of the previous step. And that's where you start to end up with more quality losses in your image or video. So you'll need to experiment to see what's the right point for you, but it's a fairly simple slider. You move it up, you get faster speed, lower quality, play around and see where is the limit for you. And it's definitely a lot more noticeable in video because of the nature of video, multiple frames and trying to hold on to the consistency and so on. Now for T-Cache, this one is the relatively straightforward one. You have a node for images over here, T-Cache for image gen, and there is a version for video. You'll also notice here that the Kijai Hunyuan video wrapper comes with its own Hunyuan video T-Cache. If you're using that and you wanna use T-Cache, you don't need another installer. And then obviously as the name implies, if you are using it for video, use the VidGen node. If you're using it for images, use the ImageGen node. WaveSpeed, on the other hand, not only has this apply first block cache, which does the efficiency node. So on WaveSpeed, there's one other node that is worth looking at that can improve the speed and efficiency of your generations. And that is the compile model plus node. And what this does is while the apply first block cache actually looks for efficiencies in the generation process, what the compile model plus node does is it looks for efficiencies in the model itself. Whereas apply first block cache builds out efficiencies in the generation process, compile model looks to recompile the model in a more efficient manner. And as a result, that should theoretically consume less memory and allow you to generate much faster. However, 
that's not the focus of today's video. But if you are interested in using it, all you need to do is daisy chain it here with apply first block cache, feed it in here, and then you feed the output to wherever apply first block cache was going to. So how do we use these models? Well, it couldn't be easier. All you need to do is look for wherever you're loading up your model. In this case, I've got the load diffusion model. However, it also works with the GGUF nodes if you're using that. You just feed in the model into whichever node you're using, whether it's wave speed or TCache. Use one or the other, not both. And then you just feed it into, if you're using Flux, the basic guider, or in the event of Hunyuan, into the model sampling SD3 node. Both of these workflows will be available down in the description below. So if you just want to plug and play, whether it's for Hunyuan or Flux, they're available down there. I will also be including one for GGUF. I will also be adding them as installable environment variables in my Comfy UI RunPod template. So if you just want to use Comfy UI on RunPod, you don't have a powerful enough GPU, for just a couple of bucks an hour, you can just use Comfy UI and I've got all of these models and nodes that pre-install for you. You just set one to whichever ones you want and give it 10, 15 minutes and Comfy UI build will be up and running with the models pre-downloaded and whatever nodes are available here pre-installed. Now, in case you're wondering, here's a couple more examples for images with the time improvements and quality differences of running it through these nodes. And here are a few video examples. And again, you can see that the ones where I push the time quite a bit, there are definitely some quality issues. And in case you're wondering, many of these prompts have come from the Prompt Crafters database. Again, link down in the description below. I always use this database to come up with prompts for my videos. It helps me find high quality prompts to figure out what my starting place is gonna be. They've got a phenomenal database. It's amazingly organized. In this case, I wanted some character prompts. So I headed down over here to character. And then I just found a design that I like. I tweaked the prompt and Bob's your uncle. There is one more thing that we need to do before we finish up. If you are on Windows, this will not work out of the box. And that is because if you're a Windows user, you will be probably missing Triton. Now, if you are using Windows, the installation for this is not that straightforward. There are a couple of steps you need to take to figure out which is the right one to install. Fortunately, while it's not straightforward, it's very easy. Once you're here on the page, head over here to releases and click on it and do not install the first one at the top. You need to find the right installer, which is based on the version of Python that you have and the CUDA version that you have installed. Now, this is where it gets a tiny bit fiddly, so stick with me. Depending on how you have your Comfy UI set up and installed, there are a few things you need to check. The reason we want to check the version on Comfy UI is because if you are running Comfy UI through some kind of virtual environment, whether it's your Comfy UI portable or you're creating the virtual environment yourself, or you're using Comfy UI straight on your Windows without a virtual environment, that will show you the version that is associated with Comfy UI. And that is the version that we want to install Triton for. Now, if you are using Comfy UI via a virtual environment that you're setting up yourself on Python, I'm going to assume that you have access to your terminal, in which case you should be able to see the Python version and CUDA version in the installation. So I'm not going to get into that. The same thing goes for the portable version. There should be a terminal that opens up for you where you can see that. However, if for whatever reason you can't see that information, here are a couple of things that you can do. Open up a terminal and this, even though I'm showing this to you on a Mac, the same command applies for Windows. You're gonna type in Python dash dash version. That will give you your Python version. 3.11.5 is the version on my computer. Again, if you're in a virtual environment, make sure you enter the virtual environment. That would probably be something like source, then, bin, activate in your Comfy UI folder. So make sure that your terminal is showing you in that folder and then do this and that will get you into your virtual environment. Then run that Python code. And then once again, to find out your CUDA version, type this in NVCC space dash dash version. If that does not appear, you will need to do some troubleshooting. However, as I said earlier, you should be able to get the information that you need from your Comfy UI terminal. Once you know your Python version and your CUDA version, come over here and these numbers over here are going to be the ones that tell you what version you need to install. So if you're on Windows, you'll probably have version 3.1.1 or 3.1.2. These will be the versions that correspond to you. 
312 being for 3.1.2. Now you'll see here as well that there are two versions of Triton, 3.0 and 3.1. 3.1 is for systems that have a PyTorch that is newer than 2.4. However, my recommendation is whether you've got a version of PyTorch 2.4 higher or lower, stick to the 3.0 as generally comfy UI has less compatibility issues with an older model. Okay, now once you know which version you need, don't download it just yet. We need to do one more thing. Now, this next step is only for users who are using the comfy UI portable, which has Python embedded in it. If you look down here at the instructions, and again, I will post these links down in the description, there will be a folder called Python Embedded. Inside this folder, you need to unzip this file, and inside there will be two folders called Include and Libs. You need to put them inside the Python Embedded folder. There is a good chance that one of these folders may already exist if they do, copy it to a safe location and then overwrite it with the version that is in the zip. Once you've done that, then open up your terminal in your Python embed folder. Once you're in there, use this command to install it properly. Do python.exe-mpip install. Then in releases, pick the version that applies to your Python version, right click it and copy the link address and paste the URL. Press enter and Triton should be installed. You can now go and install the nodes on ComfyUI and you should have no problems at all. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for tuning in. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. And if you really want to support the channel, please consider dropping by our Patreon. Your support there helps make these videos possible. And if you do decide to check it out, this year I'm committing to bringing a whole bunch of additional workflows and goodies to all of my Patreon supporters. So if there's anything particular that you're looking for, a particular workflow that you're looking for or that you want help with, please do consider supporting as I am trying to release a lot more content over on Patreon. Alternatively, consider checking out Prompt Crafters. I use this database all the time to help me come up with prompts for my images and videos. And while there's only a image database for now, I do know that a video and that a video database is coming out soon. That a curated video prompt database is coming out soon, as well as something a little bit extra for the image generator. So stay tuned. Finally, do check out the newsletter sign up down below, especially if you want to stay tuned to all kinds of updates, whether they're new videos, news articles that I release on the website, or any additional opportunities that come up that I make available for the community. Thanks so much, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.